Hi there, welcome back to the Depot. I am Roman and this is the already seventh episode of our F-Sharp introductory series. In the last episode, I introduced two awesome F-Sharp features to you, discriminated unions and pattern matching. And with the help of these features, we fixed an annoying bug, um, which was that we could enter completely wrong flavors and then in the end our calculations were completely wrong because our system couldn't really calculate those wrong, uh, those wrong entries of our, uh, result, in our results. So after we introduced discriminated unions, all these bugs were a thing of the past. But of course, Clara had a new idea. She has her special flavors and she has the normal flavors. And up to now, she has to decide which kind of flavors she could um, sell on a day because in our final functions we could only use one type uh, of, of flavors in, in our lists. But now she thinks what would be the case if I maybe when I go to richer neighborhoods I sell only my special ice creams and I put some more money uh, on top of it. So I will take maybe 20 cents more when I sell my special flavors and when I go to a bit uh, or not so rich neighborhoods or to schools or kindergartens or wherever. I only sell my strawberry and vanilla ice creams uh, or flavors and I will I want to sell this them for for less money. So in order to do this we need to dive a bit deeper into the possibilities of discriminated unions and we are going to explore how to wrap different values in discriminated union types. And on our way doing this, I will also introduce to you the concept of recursive functions. A lot to do, loose kids. The problem that we had in our last episode here is that we can't mix and match our special flavors with our normal flavors because they are different types. What would be the solution for this? Well, if we can't mix them because they are different types, maybe there is a chance to make them one type. And this chance is actually there because our discriminated unions cases don't need to be only like this, like only a constructor function. They are also allowed to wrap some specific values. So for example, here we could say that we our flavor is not only the strawberry and the vanilla, we also have a special flavor and this flavor uh, wraps some kind of special flavor. So what have we done here? Yeah, we, we, we stuck together two different types into one type. We still have our special flavor, but we used this special flavor or we wrap this special flavor in one case, one new case of our flavor discriminated union and we call this case special. Now that we have this we can scratch most of our functions um, because we can do pretty much everything with pattern matching now. So let's do this. Scratch all of this and we need a new price for, let's call this here price for, a new price for function. So let's call it flat price for and we will give it a flavor. And then we match on this flavor with. So now we have a bit more cases. We have the strawberry which in K is 1.1. The price for the strawberry is 1.1. We also have the vanilla case which was 0.9 and now we have the special case. And the special flavor wraps a value of type special flavor. So we can get this value like this. We can use any name in here. We, we bind this to this new name special in this case here. 
And we can say then, what do we have here? Well, we have a special flavor. So we can pattern match again on this special flavor. We say match special with red rising. And here we want to say 1.1. And we have the case cream cream. And this was 0.9. So that's it, right? We we stuck our two types together. Uh, we wrapped our special flavor in our special uh, in our special case, and we 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 wrote a new function that pattern matches on our flavor. And when we got a special, it pattern matches again on this special flavor. But when we look down here, we see that we still have the compiler error because strawberry is still of type flavor and bread rising is of type special flavor. So what do we need? We need to create a type flavor or an instance of type flavor for all of our entries in our list. How do we do this? Well, this is, as I said, it's just a constructor. So we can call this function with uh, at an instance of the type special flavor. We get the instance of type special flavor by calling this constructor and then we could just call this special constructor. And we can do this for all of those things here. So we call it special constructor, of course I did this twice. Um, and now we see that we have special red rising, special red rising and in the end the strawberry. And all of our entries are now of type flavor. So when we run our stuff, we get back seven euro and thirty cents. Really nice. Is there a way to improve on this? Of course there is. The first thing I'd say is that we wanted to to have a higher price for red rising and cream cream. Well this is not really hard to do. We could just say in this case we say plus twenty cents and in this case we also say plus twenty cents. So when we run all this again, we get a higher result. Nice. But what we lost here is actually the idea that the red rising is just an alias for a strawberry and the cream dream is just an alias for the vanilla. This is really lost here. So when I change my price of strawberry to 1.2, it's not reflected down here in the red rising. Um, case, which might be pretty bad later on. So what can we do? We can actually say that in this case we want to call our price for function again, but this time with the value strawberry. So we could say we call price or with strawberry and in this case we could call price for with vanilla. So theoretically this would mean when we reach this place we call our function again with the strawberry we get back the 1.1 and then we add 0.2 on top of it. But here it says the value of constructor price for is not defined which is strange because we defined it. Yes, but this is due to the, the inner workings of the F-sharp compiler. It's a top-down compiler. And when we reach this point, the name price for is not, not completely defined yet. So we are not in the, in the, at the end of the function. So what we need to do here is we need to tell the function that it gets called, that it that it's allowed to call itself again. A function that is allowed or that is calling itself again is called a, rec a recursive function. And so we need the rec keyword in here. So we tell the F-sharp compiler that this is a recursive function. Please make this name available, this name available within the function. So now we can call this again and we see that we still get 
8 euro and 50 cents. All right, nice. So we have our, we have defined our first recursive function and all is good. But I say we still can improve this function because the pattern matching in F-sharp is very, very powerful. And just to recapitulate, uh, recapitulate, what are we doing here? We pattern match on the, on how the instance of this flavor type was created. In this case, with a call to the constructor strawberry. In this case, with a call to the constructor vanilla. In this case, it might have been called with a call to the constructor red rising and then with the constructor special. And we can actually pattern match to, to this um, to this call, um, call chain, so to say, um, in one case. So we don't need this inner match to, to, we don't need to write this down. We can actually say, all right, we match on special red rising and we match on special cream dream. now I think we have a really nice and beautiful price for function and you can really understand what is going on in there. All right, now we've learned a lot more about discriminated unions, about pattern matching, and we enabled Clara to choose whether she wants to use or to sell her specials or her normal flavors. Now everything works well, but of course Clara has new ideas how to improve her business and her newest idea is to sell different sizes of her ice creams. In order to be able to fulfill or implement her requirements, I am going to introduce a new data type of F-Sharp to you, records. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them here. I hope you have a good day. See you next time.